Wang Shu in now hiring. Urgently seeking one temporary chef willing to pay top Mora salary negotiable. Look, traveler, an urgent hiring notice, and they're paying top Mora too. Oh, Paimon likes the sound of that. Hmm. You're right. It is strange. Do you think something happened to Yen Xiao? Cause that guy barely lets anyone ever set foot in his kitchen. Doesn't exactly seem like the type to hire help. The notice says interested parties should go upstairs and talk to the innkeeper Huayan. Should we go and see what's up? Yeah, and we can ask about the pay while we're at it. Boss, uh, there's really no need for this. It's just a little burn, that's all. It won't get in the way of my work. Perhaps not, but continuing to work will only hinder your recovery. You need to rest for a few days. We'll figure something out. Huayan! Yan Chao! Oh? Traveler and Paimon! What brings you to this neck of the woods? And we decided to come check out... Um... Check up on Yan Chao. Uh... I knew we shouldn't have posted that notice. It's really nothing to worry about. I'm fine. I swear. How kind of you. My thanks to you both. And thanks on Yan Xiao's behalf, too. There's nothing to be embarrassed about, Yan Xiao. Just tell them what happened. Oh, all right. Well, basically, we had a lot of guests pouring in for the lantern rite. Things got busy, I started rushing, and I ended up accidentally burning my hand while plating a dish. Well, you know what they say. Play with fire long enough and you're bound to get burned. E even the best chefs slip up sometimes. A anyway, it's nothing, uh, just a tiny burn. I can still... Now, now. I don't want you pushing yourself. You'll only make it worse. And then you'll be looking at more than just a couple of days off to recover. But the lantern rites only just finished. And we're still getting tons of guests. Now's not a good time for me to rest. But, uh, plus, lots of the guests are visiting from other nations. We can't just bring in some random chef off the street. We have a reputation to uphold. I, I refuse to let someone else ruin the good name we've made for ourselves here. <laughs> Listen to you. Anyone would think that you're the boss and not me. But he's not wrong. Yan Shao was one of the favorites in the Masterful Chefs Tournament. No matter how you look at it, his are big boots to fill. I don't mean to boast, but any chef of my caliber probably has their own restaurant to look after. It's not going to be easy to find someone who's got the skills and has the time to help us out. Hmm. Looks like we might have to increase the pay we're offering even further. Hmm. Do we know anyone that's a good chef and has the time to help out? Oh, of course! Oh, right! Yes, now I think about it. I do recall hearing good things about your cooking ability. I suppose I'd added you to my mental list of people who can hold their own in a combat situation, but forgot you can cook. Um, why are you even keeping a mental list of people who can fight? <laughs> maybe a story for another time. More importantly, I'm sure Yan Xiao would be comfortable leaving his kitchen in your hands, if anyone's. What do you think, Yan Xiao? Well, since it's you, I suppose that's better than anyone else. What do you think, Traveler? Should we do it? I should warn you that cooking for customers is quite a different ball game from cooking for yourself, so I'll stick around the kitchen over the next few days to help smooth things over. Oh, so he's not leaving the kitchen after all? I believe there's some spare kitchenware here at the inn. Boss, would you mind? Of course, of course. I'll take care of it. Whew. All done. Come, take a look. This was made with your measurements in mind. Ah, it's nothing. A little handicraft and elbow grease goes a long way. All right, Yan Xiao. I'll leave you to take it from here. You really went to all the 
trouble with building a new stovetop? What was wrong with the original? Boy, you really hate when people touch your stuff, huh? No, no, it's nothing like that. As Boss always says, hire who you trust and trust who you hire. I just thought the original setup might be a little, um, tall for you. Ahem. <clears throat> uh, anyway, as I was saying, cooking for guests is different from cooking for yourself. Not only do you have to execute on taste, aroma, and appearance, but you also need to ensure speed, precision, and consistency. Having the right equipment is a big part of that. Ill-suited equipment doesn't just make the job more tiring, it also slows you down. And paying customers don't have unlimited patience. Sometimes cooking is all about being well prepared. That's how you ensure speed. Okay, and what about precision and consistency? Ah, precision all comes down to using your eyes. Where to slice into a particular cut of meat, how much oil to use, how to tell when a dish is done cooking. When you cook for yourself, you can always add salt if it's too bland, or add water if it's too salty. You can tweak the taste as you go, but in a restaurant, there's not that much room for trial and error. Worst case scenario, Paimon can deal with any subpar dishes by making sure they get properly disposed of. <laughs> the final thing you have to focus on is consistency. You have to be able to handle the most challenging orders with the same level of technique and skill as the easiest ones. This is particularly important when you have guests from all over, each with their own tastes and preferences. You have to cater to their own dietary needs while also giving them the opportunity to enjoy our local delicacies. Uh, this last point is making Paimon's head spin. <laughs> Don't worry. Matter of fact, Someone as well-traveled as you may even have a better handle on it than me once you get started. And, of course, I'll be around to help you over the next few days. I don't think we'll have any trouble making all our guests feel right at home. There's no time to lose, so let's get started. I imagine you probably have a good handle on the cooking side of things already. What you need to pay attention to is remembering each table's order. Try not to get them mixed up. This is peak season. You both did a mighty fine job for your first time serving guests at the inn. Luckily, all our customers were familiar faces this time around, so we didn't get any strange requests. Otherwise, today would have been even more challenging. No strange requests? Someone asked for almond tofu drizzled in soy sauce. Even Paimon has never tried that combination. <laughs> it's a wide world out there. People have all kinds of different tastes. Being able to cater to all is the real essence of Leo cuisine. Also, the thing about requests is that they're usually very specific. So as long as you do what they asked, you're unlikely to have any issues. What's really tricky is when guests give you free reign to do anything you want. Uh, excuse me. Are you still open by any chance? Huh? Hyman knows that voice. <gasps> Let's go check it out! Uh, what should we do? It doesn't look like anyone's here. Uh, if only we'd gotten here a bit sooner. It's alright. If we start building a campfire now, we'll be eating before too long. Right. Besides, if anyone's to blame, it's Linny. So busy being a greedy culture vulture that he lost track of time. I'm on. So, is the traveler here? Ch 
Traveler, Paimon! What a nice surprise! Paimon was gonna say the same thing! We're just lending a helping hand at the end. Anyway, so that's how we ended up here. But well, what about you guys? Don't tell us. Uh, father sent you on another mission? No, quite the opposite, actually. We're in Liyue on vacation. And while we're here, I thought a cultural tour might be in order. Uh, uh, father said we deserve some rest after everything that happened recently. Otherwise, it could jeopardize our next mission. It's not every day we get this kind of opportunity. Lenny thought it might be fun to spend some time in Liyue, especially since it's lantern right season. We could hardly pass up the opportunity to watch a Liyue-style magic show. Although, I think they call it Conjuring here. Uh, in our time here, we've seen Conjuring tricks incorporated into a Liyue opera show, and even a Wushu dance. It was amazing. So, we decided to stay here for a few more days to see what other forms of inspiration this land might have in store for us. We visited Granny Roshin in Chingsa Village not long ago, and today we continued our cultural tour in the area around here. In the end, though, we lost track of time. We haven't even eaten anything yet. <laughs> and speaking of eating, as you know, seafood is a big part of both Liyue and Fontaine cuisine, but it's cooked very differently here. We simply had to try some local seafood after coming all this way. That's another reason why we decided to extend our trip. Oh, need any recommendations? What have you tried so far? That fish one with the misleading name. Sounds bland, but it's drowning in hot chilies. Oh, you mean black back perch soup? You're right, the name doesn't give much away. <laughs> it looked and smelled so appetizing that Lynette took a huge mouthful, blissfully unaware that she was about to set her mouth on fire. She could barely speak for the rest of the day after that. Uh, luckily, that wasn't a huge adjustment for her. What? Aren't you guys hungry too? Uh, yes. A little. Uh, <laughs> uh... Yes, I'm ready to eat. Traveler, I'm afraid we'll have to send you back to the kitchen now. Hmm, good question. I doubt we'll be able to decipher the menu, so why don't you recommend something? You should be pretty familiar with our tastes. Uh, one more thing. Please, if you have a heart, don't make it spicy. I thought the black back perch stew was actually pretty tasty. And now that you know it's spicy, you won't be caught off guard, right? Why don't we give it another chance? Once was more than enough. <laughs> Fontaine, huh? No wonder they can't handle too much spice. Still, if we make the food too bland, they might as well be eating back home. Hmm. There's this crab and shrimp stir-fry I know that could work. It's quite heavily seasoned, but it's a lot milder than it looks. It has a light but really satisfying flavor. Ooh, that sounds perfect! What's it called? <laughs> well, this is where it gets interesting. They call it the Palace Jewels. The crab roe is supposed to look like pearls of gold, and the shrimp meat like chunks of jade. Here's the recipe. When you're ready, go ahead and give it a try.
jewels. Enjoy! Ah, yes. We meant to say, you two must be tired after a long day of work. Do you want to eat with us? Oh, now that you mention it, Paimon is a little hungry. Well, if you insist, then who are we to refuse? <laughs> oh, right. Of course, you're still our customers. Uh, why aren't you eating? The sauce looks a little overpowering. Oh, uh... According to Liu at custom, it's probably good table manners to let someone else go first. <clears throat> Looks delicious, traveler. I guess I'll dig in first. Here goes. What is it? Do you need some water? No. It's delicious. The flavor is so Pure. It's drenched in sauce, but somehow it just enhances the natural flavor of the seafood. T try it for yourselves. Um, uh, uh all right. Mmm. Hmm. <laughs> what is that? Crab roe? Yep, you have quite the palate with it. No wonder it pairs so well with the shrimp meat. I've never seen it prepared this way before. According to the creator, chewy crab, compliment succulent shrimp, making a spectacular seafood ensemble with a succulent flavor and luscious mouthfeel. The crab row glitters like pearls of gold, and the shrimp shines like chunks of jade. Hence its name, the Palace Jewels. So that's where the name comes from. I suppose it's quite fitting, then. Huh. Was Paimon always this well-spoken? This dish must be right up your alley, Lynette. Uh, it's half gone already? When did that happen? I heard that in Liyue. The biggest compliment you can pay to the chef is to leave a clean plate. It's delicious. Thank you ever so much. I think I'm finally getting the hang of chopsticks. Uh, yeah. Well, Linny and Lynette picked it up in no time, but they're naturally dexterous. Unlike me, it's taken me a lot longer, but I'm slowly getting there. Oh, uh, speaking of chopsticks, in one of the shows we've seen here, Someone performed a conjuring trick using a bowl and chopsticks. So, if I want to be a good magician's assistant, I need to keep practicing. Lynette's not usually so forthcoming about what she likes. But this time, well, she's expressed it in more ways than one. I guess you've rubbed off on her too. <laughs> or maybe your cooking is simply too delicious to resist. The next time our paths cross in Fontaine, you'll have to fire up your cooking skills for my other siblings as well. How does that sound, oh great master chef? Oh yeah? <laughs> well then, I'll have to clear my schedule. Calorie surplus detected. Digestion mode engaged. Yeah. Well, Lenny and I are usually careful about what we eat, because we have to stay in performance shape. That, plus it's generally bad manners to overindulge at the dinner table. But once in a while, it's nice to treat yourself in the company of family. Besides, if I'd waited until my brothers were finished trying to outpolite each other, the food would have gone cold. So your friends like the dish, huh? Well done! Not bad at all for your first day on the job. There'll be more to come, so keep it up. Morning! The boss tells me that both new and returning customers have nothing but good things to say about you. <laughs> I have to admit, I was a little worried about throwing you right into the deep end. But it looks like you've got what it takes to handle the day-to-day -day here. So it should be plain sailing. Well, just as long as we don't run into any extremely picky customers with unreasonably specific requests. Oh, have you had someone like that before? Of course. 
The worst are those old scholars who have barely cooked a day in their life, but think reading a stack of books on the topic makes them the expert. They criticize you for no reason, claiming your cooking method isn't faithful to the original, or that the flavor profile isn't authentic because you used an ingredient that wasn't in their beloved centuries-old version of the recipe. This is Wang Shuin. Hmm. It does have the look and feel of a time-honored establishment. Oh, innkeeper! We'll have each of your signature dishes, please, as fast as you can serve them. The most expensive ones. Farzan! Oops, uh, Madam Farzan. <laughs> oh my. Traveler, Paimon, whatever are you doing here? We could ask you the same thing. Where'd you suddenly get the funds to go sightseeing and to order the most expensive things on the menu? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not here to sightsee. Exemplary scholars like myself are highly sought after by cruise operators in need of an onboard consultant as they travel the world. Uh, uh, Madam Farzan, please, uh, slow down. Uh, none of us slept last night. How come Madam Farzan still has so much energy? Uh, if she's really over a hundred years old, I don't understand how she keeps going. <sighs> it's all my fault. She's been like this ever since I told her I'd be paying the expenses. Layla! And... Dory? Huh. Never would have bet on this combination. Temporary chef, huh? Wow. No rest for the wicked. Well... If the chef here is trusting you to run his whole kitchen, then I've got no doubt we're in for some authentic Leo S specialties. So, why are you all in Leo again? Something about being an onboard consultant? I got my hands on a new boat from Fontaine a while ago, equipped with cutting edge navigation technology. If we manage to spread the word, it could have huge business potential. Right now, we're doing some test runs. We sailed from Port Ormos to Rito, then from Rito to Liyue Harbor. Next, we're planning to go to Dornman Port. Oh, Madame Farzan and me were hired to fine-tune the compass and other equipment. We sailed around the Sea of Clouds all of last night to put the system through some stress testing. Overtime for which they'll both be fairly compensated. They're both here willingly. The contract is crystal clear on that. You really cover all your bases, don't you? Let Paimon guess. Paying the expenses is part of the compensation, isn't it? No wonder Madame Farozan is going for all the most expensive dishes. <laughs> it's not every day someone tells you to order whatever you like. Now, first up, we'll have the... <clears throat> Farazan, uh, Madame Farazan, that is. While I am more than happy to treat you both to the most expensive dishes on the menu, we must remember that most expensive does not always mean best. I've heard that the most expensive dishes in Liyue are usually either seafood-based or take an exceptionally long time to prepare. Now, I don't know about you two, but after so many days at sea, I don't think I can so much as look at another piece of seafood again for at least the foreseeable future. Huh. That's actually a good point. Not to mention that poor Layla here looks like she's about to faint from hunger. Huh? Oh, that's not because of hunger. Surely the wise and virtuous Madame Farazan could not bear to watch her poor students sit here and waste away. Oh, well, of course I care about my students' well-being, but why do I feel like I'm being tricked? So, let's not order anything that'll take too long to prepare. Aside from that and seafood, we'll take whatever other expensive dishes you have. Over to you, traveler. No seafood and nothing that takes too long to cook. The rest is up to you. <laughs> Hmm. I had my eye on Adeptus Temptation, bamboo shoot soup, and golden shrimp balls. I mean, I suppose they'll have to wait for the next time. <sighs> but that could be years from now. Oh, Madame Farazan looks so deflated all of a sudden. Um, please still try to choose dishes on the expensive side, okay? So, expensive, but no seafood, and nothing that takes too long to cook. That rules out pretty much our entire menu. 
Do these people get a kick out of being impossible to please? Oh, that Dory! Is she doing this on purpose? <laughs> this isn't Leoli Pavilion or Xinyua Kiosk. This is Wangshu Inn. We don't stock up on rare and exotic ingredients. We only get them in if someone puts in a special reservation. <sighs> well, if we're stuck with regular ingredients and we're on a time limit, there's only one way to bump up the price. And that's by cooking a dish that uses the chef's expertise and creativity to the fullest. As it happens, I know a recipe for something called trembling strings and rushing reeds. It can be whipped up quickly with what we already have in the kitchen. One plate usually goes for 30,000 mora. 30,000? But if it's quick to make and isn't fancy, what exactly makes it so special? Quick doesn't have to mean quick and easy. To perfect this dish, you need expert knife work and very precise control over the heat. You have to finely slice several different types of meat into fine threads, knead them together into strips, then gently stir fry them in the pan. What you end up with is a whole variety of flavors that come through layer by layer. This dish is unique in offering a harmonious blend of multiple kinds of meat, all cooked to perfection, while still bursting with their own distinct flavors. Do it right, and you've got a culinary masterpiece in your hands. But if you botch it, it's just a bunch of meat thrown on a plate. Oh, Paimon gets it now! So this dish gets its value not from the ingredients, but the chef's expertise! Now don't worry. I can take care of the kneading and other prep work for you. You just focus on bringing it all together. Believe in yourself. You can do this. And if you mess it up, I'm almost still be happy to eat it. <laughs> Food's ready. Please enjoy. Ooh, smells delightful. Oh, we meant to ask, have you two eaten breakfast yet? If not, why don't you join us at the table? Uh, did Dory just offer us a free meal? When did she become so generous? <laughs> Let's not forget that the biggest business deals are always settled over a meal. Come on, come on, come on, sit down and join us. Everyone, dig in. This dish looks simple enough, and I did my research, so surely it can't cost all that much. Worst case scenario, maybe 10,000 mora? This dish had better be worth working overtime all night for. Well, Traveler, this is the moment of truth. Oh, so tired. So sleepy. I just want to eat up and get to bed. Is this... fowl? Oh, wait. No, the texture is more like shroom boar. There's a different flavor in every bite. And the discerning palate might detect a hint of something smoked, too. Quite marvelous. How is this made? Ham? But I don't see any ham anywhere. Oh. Ha-ha! <laughs> so you've noticed. Single strip is needed from several different kinds of meat. Paimon and Yan Xiao put in a lot of effort to make it just right. Uh, so I'm not an expert or anything, but don't different meats have different cooking times? Uh, uh how is everything in this dish cooked to perfection? Well, you see, um, that's a trade secret. Wow. So this dish really is one of a kind. That makes the whole trip worth it. By the way, does this special dish have a name? Ah! Paimon forgot to mention that part. The dish is called Trembling Strings and Rushing Reeds, alluding to the way that the different threads of meat are woven together, and also the complex layers of flavor, yes? Akin to the harmonies of a musical ensemble. The name, if I'm not mistaken is a Leo idiom that evokes a vigorous orchestral performance featuring both stringed and wind instruments playing together. Mm, quite an apt name for this dish. Uh, how did you know all that? Every student has to master at least 20 languages before they graduate. Wait, is that 
that not a requirement anymore? Uh, huh? Oh, that used to be a thing? Oh! Hyman almost forgot that you're also from Harabitat. So, um... Anyway, how much does this dish cost? Oh, don't worry, not too much. That'll be, uh, 30,000 more, please and thank you. 30,000? Uh, about that, Paimon, traveler, I nearly invited you to join us at the table, did I not? I don't believe I committed to paying for you. So, perhaps we could split the bill accordingly? Oh, Paimon knew it was too good to be true. Hey, there's no need to... Oh, uh, well, it was your hard work anyway. You can call the shots. 20% off of 30,000? <sighs> That's still a pretty hefty expense. <sighs> all right, all right. I'll just consider that the cost of learning about this dish. Once I'm back in Sumeru, I'll be sure to find someone to help me recreate the dish. And then, and then, I'll make it all back. Ah, oh, I feel so much better now that I've gotten some food in me. Delicious food really does wonders for one's spirit. Uh, 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 my advisor said that young people shouldn't stay cooped up in the academia all the time. Uh, they told me that I should take the chance to get out and see the stars in other skies. Oh, uh, maybe I can think of it as my first internship experience? Oh, but it sure is exhausting. Hmm. <sighs> now, how should I justify a high price tag for a dish without any fancy ingredients? Huh. Maybe start by giving it a fancy sounding name? Uh, <laughs> uh, I should have known you'd see through me. <sighs> Everyone was exhausted and seasick when I made the offer last night, so I figured they probably wouldn't be able to eat all that much today. Well, you saw how that turned out. I tried placing some limitations on the order to keep costs under control, but you still found a way around my schemes. <sighs> That's what I get for not thoroughly researching the market beforehand. Hey, you're not even paying those too much of a salary. Just treat them fairly next time and don't be so stingy. Well, yeah, but that's why Paimon's qualified to talk about this. Even though I didn't get to try Adeptus Temptation or Bamboo Shoot Soup, this trembling strings and rushing reeds was still quite impressive. Thank you, well, about that. Even though newfangled contraptions are hardly my cup of tea, Dory's offer was quite enticing. She said that every time we stopped at a new harbor, I'd be free to go and pick out some ancient books at the market and bring them back to Sumeru. <laughs> I couldn't resist an offer like that. So I offered to join for the lowest possible pay to undercut all my Kasharawar competitors. We're off to a good start this morning. Keep up the good work. I'm counting on you. Morning! Time to fire up the stove for another day of customers. Thanks again. Great work! Well, you're looking more like a head chef every day. <laughs> Whatever crazy characters come walking through that door, I know you'll be able to handle them. Wait! No! Every time you say something like that, you jinx it! Hey, that's not true. Anyway, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what up, bro? I didn't know you were in Liyue, too. Ah, it's always nice to run into a broad and a Zoomin fellow. But, uh, wait, did I say that right? Almost. I think you meant fellow Inazuman abroad, boss. Ah, yeah, 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 that's the one. Yeah, we gotta look out for each other when we're this far from home. Don't we, Ayato? <laughs> Lavender melon, uh, uh, the sky cleaving white iron variety, <laughs> and my compadre, too. All my buddies in one place. God, today's my lucky day. Didn't you say you were gonna knuckle down and earn some more when you got home? How come you're back in Lele so soon? Ah, <laughs> that can wait. 
As soon as I announce that Arataki Ito is available for hire, they'll be throwing Mora at me. Right now, I got a more urgent situation to attend to. I'm in the mood for some good, spicy food. Oh, and uh, while we're here, we were gonna also see if Grandmaster Hanakato's okay and whatnot. Not too long ago, I heard a rumor that someone was hosting an Onikabuto fighting contest in Liyue. Naturally, I came here as soon as I could. What? You missed it? Aw, oh, man, what a bummer! Quite the bummer, indeed. Though all is not lost. Since you're here, you'll be able to tell me all about it. <laughs> sure thing, my man. But uh, let's catch up over some food, huh? Where's the chef, anyway? Hey, get the chef out here! I got compadres to feed! Yeah, sure, me too. Wait, what? Wow. Old Chucker set up that one for us really nicely. Gotta give him some credit for that. Uh, <laughs> good one, compadre. You almost got me there. All right, well, uh, get the chef out here. So, uh, may I take your order? <laughs> if you're entertaining guests, I can recommend the palace jewels, a trembling strings and rushing reeds. Oh. Boss, don't forget the budget. Yeah, yeah, okay, uh, um... Uh, got anything a little more, uh, down to earth? Down to earth? Oh, well, well, we do a mean humbly enough. Real hearty dish with a ton of flavor, and we don't skimp on the portion size either. That'd be the best value for your mora. Humbly enough, huh? Oh, sounds like my kind of grub. We'll take that. No need for anything fancy. We're all friends here. Excellent choice, Ito. I'm no fan of culinary ostentation either. <laughs> Sometimes a bro just knows, hmm? A bro just knows? Yes, a bro just knows! <laughs> bros don't suppose, cause bros just knows! Is this for real? Ah, oh, whatever, Paimon's leaving you guys to it. Seriously, if I blinked, I would've missed it. Crimson Staff just launched itself a Bloom Pruner and sent it flying! I'd expect no less of the bona fide Beetle Battle King himself. It sounds like a truly epoch defining duel. <sighs> the air was getting stifling, so I made some excuses and slipped away. Anyway, thanks for taking the hint earlier. I'll fill you in later. Gotta say, your friend's quite a character. Still, humbly enough isn't that hard to make, so I don't think we'll have any problems with this order. Humbly enough, anyway. A hearty meat dish is a good start, but in Paimon's experience, one humble dish is never enough. Uh, I said it was hearty, but I never said it contained meat. Don't be fooled by the appearance. It's actually just tofu, made to look and taste like meat. Wait, tofu's made of beans, isn't it? Oh, Bullchucker can't eat that! Guess we should get them to pick something else instead. What's the issue? I think I caught the word tofu. Wait, what are you doing? The, the kitchen is staff members only. <sighs> Never mind, I'll let it slide. Ma'am, could you possibly ask your boss to order something else instead? <laughs> no one gets my bro Ayato like I do. I hereby declare that humbly enough will be an everlasting symbol of our friendship, or my name ain't Arataki Ito! Hey, where's our food at? Hurry up, I'm almost done recounting the epic adventures of Crimson Staff. Uh, as you can see, changing the order may be a little difficult. Oh, brother, his whole ego is riding on this, huh? Even if we break the news to him, he'd probably rather eat the tofu than eat his words. Sounds good. I'll make sure he fills up on those. We'll just have to play the rest by ear. Ah, food's here! Oh, so this is humbly enough. You guys don't mess around. Woo, love me that portion size. Come on, compadre, grab a seat. We're all friends here, so don't hold back. I'm just gonna dig right in. <clears throat> Boss, we should respect the local customs. Here in Liyue, it's polite to let the guests eat first. Polite? Uh, Shinobu, I thought old-timey traditions weren't your style. 
Huh? Are you kidding me, compadre? Oh, wait, I get it. The food smells so dang good, now everyone's dying to go first. Well, guess I only got my own good taste to blame. Go on, dive in. I'll wait till last. Ah. Uh. <laughs> I see. Finally, it's my turn. Woohoo! I spy a big chunk of deliciousness with my name on it. What? Don't. Huh? Wait, what is it now? Huh? Okay, here goes. Anyway, so, uh, Paimon forgot to tell you the really cool origin story of this dish. Origin story? Dude, who cares where it came from? We all know where it's going. <laughs> Am I right? Down the gullet! Uh, well, um, skipping the origin story is like... Like, going traveling without a tour guide! Trust Paimon, you'll get way more out of the experience after you hear it. Paimon makes an astute observation. Much as every tea must be appreciated on its own terms, is it not a waste of the chef's goodwill to sample a dish without hearing its tale? My compadre's goodwill, huh? Oh. That going to waste. All right then, give me the full story. I'm all ears. That's more like it. Let's start with the ingredients. Actually, no. Let's start with the story of Wang Huin, which starts with the history of Dihua Marsh. Now's our chance, traveler. The tale of Dihua Marsh hits hard. People in the past had it pretty rough. Makes you appreciate what you got. Humbly enough, yeah, that's a good way to think about life. Darn, there's no sad way to tell so from here. How did we get so off topic? Uh, well, good news is there's only a little bit left. Uh, oh, compadre, she know boo. Have you been eating this whole time? Save me some dregs, why don't ya? That's it, I'm done waiting. It's my turn to eat. Wait, boss, that's made of- One moment, Ito. I have a small request, if you would be so kind as to consider it. I left home in a hurry and was unable to bring any of my family with me. They've all heard so much about you and are huge admirers of the Arataki gang. So they will be devastated to learn that they missed out on this opportunity. However, if you were willing to let me bring the remaining portion of Humbly Enough back to them, I'm sure it will help to lift their spirits. Hey, uh, yeah, I don't know. Boss, you gotta do right by your friends. They're pretty big on that in Liyue. Besides, you did eat quite a lot of the grilled fish while we were waiting for the main course, including mine and Ayato's. Huh? Oh, those were for you guys? Ah, oh, dang it! I got too carried away telling that story, didn't I? In that case, pass my regards to your fan, bro. El Chefe, can we get the rest of this to go? Count Crushmore. Instant kill. I never knew there were so many elite beetle fighters in Liyue. <laughs> can you imagine? That would be tardiness of the most unfashionable variety. No. In truth, this trip is part business, part leisure. Every visitor has their own agenda. For some, the festivities are all the more reason to visit. For others, all the more reason to avoid the crowds. In any case, one way or another, I seem to have ended up in the right place at the right time. Now, as for the leftover tofu... Yes, I'm sure Toma will dispose of it as he sees fit. I have to get back to the docks as soon as this meal is done. Well, uh, thing is... I can explain. Boss recently found work as a sailor, which allowed him to hitch a ride here. After the ship docked, he had some free time to do as he pleases. He's been using that time to hang out with Grandmaster Hanakato. Just because he's here already! No other reason! Looks like that's all sorted. All right. Take some time to collect yourself. The next big group is coming in. How time flies. My burns are almost healed now, so I should be ready to take back the kitchen tomorrow. You've really gone above and beyond these past few days. Last day today. 
Here's hoping we get through it without incident. Uh, why does Paimon feel like you just jinxed us again? Whew. We made it all the way to the evening. It ended up being a pretty smooth day after all. Maybe it's because we've gotten so experienced at running this whole thing. We've come a long way since our first day on the job, haven't we? Hmm. Back then, we were struggling to remember who ordered what. But everything's a piece of cake now. Yeah, but who would come by this late in the evening? Uh, actually, now that Paimon thinks of it, Lenny and his siblings came around about this time the first day, didn't they? Traveler? Paimon? Fancy seeing you two here. Amber? And you and Mika too! Are you here for dinner? Why so late in the day? We just finished an escort mission for a merchant caravan. The original plan was to make do with some rations for this evening and continue our trek north towards Stonegate. But Captain Eula brought up the fact that none of us have eaten Liyue cuisine for quite some time. We thought we might as well swing by the inn and see if we can still order something. Ooh, so this is Eula's treat, huh? <clears throat> We've been eating the same rations for the entire trip, so I simply thought it was high time we had ourselves a proper meal. Do you have a problem with that? Good question. What should we get? Hmm? Wait a sec. Why are you taking our order? The traveler's been filling in for the chef here. You came at just the right time. You'll be the last customers to enjoy her cooking before the original chef takes back the reins. Wow, really? Good thing Eula suggested we come here. I wouldn't want to miss this. So, what shall we get? Hmm, I'm not as familiar with Liyue cuisine as I used to be. Mika, Eula, what are you in the mood for? Anything goes. I'm just looking forward to trying the honorary night's cooking for myself. I'm sure it'll be a great learning opportunity for me. Hmm, something small, I suppose. We have to hit the road again after we eat. Beyond that, anything goes. Wasn't it your idea to come here, though? Eesh, this is like getting blood from a stone. All right, guess it's up to you, Amber. You name it, we'll cook it. Huh? Then I guess... Eh, I don't really mind either. Anything goes. Ah! I'm sorry. I really can't think of anything off the top of my head. I mean, I could pick from the menu at random, but I'd feel more comfortable leaving the chef to choose. Oh, one thing. I know I said I don't mind what we have, but no alcohol, please. Neither of them can drink. It's a... Uh, I've still got some sparkling water here. Anything goes, huh? Oh dear. This is a chef's worst nightmare. With no idea of your customers' palates, you're left to make a wild guess. Still, now that you've worked in the kitchen for so many days, I have faith that you'll be able to figure it out. Go on. Show them what you've got. Mmm, this is delicious. Perfectly seasoned, and even the rice is bursting with flavor. Nothing like a piping hot meal served straight from the stove. I've missed this. <laughs> You've put the finest Favonian field rations to shame, and that's no mean feat. So, tell us, Traveler, what's this one called? It's Cubs! Um... Paimon's guessing we can't just call it anything goes, right? Oh, hell, Paimon doesn't know how to explain this dish at all! It's got no name, it's just basic ingredients simply cooked! Basic ingredients simply cooked? Really? I could have sworn that you put something fancy in here, or gave it some kind of chef's magic touch. Not the finest dish in the world, but the one they need right now. Okay, you've lost Paimon. What do you mean? So you mean, we only think this is delicious because we're so hungry? Hmm, there's got to be more to it than that. Perhaps the fact that the aroma of freshly cooked hot food is a welcome change from cold pre-prepared rations. Oh, kind of like the feeling of waking up to the smell of freshly baked bread in the morning? Huh, that makes sense. Yeah, it's almost like we're back at Good Hunter again. Uh, but 
good hunters in Mondstadt. Why make a point of trying Lyric Cuisine if you can't even taste the difference? Oh, I'm not talking about the taste. I just meant the feeling of comfort, you know? It's like the feeling of coming home. Comfort? Coming home? Well, Yan Xiao did say we want to make our guests feel right at home. So in other words, the secret ingredient is passion? Despite how terribly cliched that sounds, I'll admit that it holds true for this meal. <laughs> well played. Mark my words, I'll remember this recipe. Okay, but you can't really have a recipe without a name though, right? Have we come up with a name for this dish yet? Hmm... How about right at home? The rations we brought were adapted for my signature moon pies. To come up with something even tastier. I gotta hand it to you. You did a great job. Still, please do drop by and try a few Stormcrest pies next time you're in town. Hmm. Ah, uh, sorry. I zoned out just now. Didn't see you coming. Yeah, that food you cooked for us just now? It reminded me of the meals my grandfather used to make for me. I thought I'd forgotten how they tasted, but it all came rushing back. He used to make Liyue dishes all the time. i do my outrider training with him until the evening, then wait patiently at the dinner table. I'd sit there with the smell of delicious food wafting in from the kitchen, waiting for him to finally emerge with the goods. Sometimes we'd have Eula around for dinner, and even though she'd always find something to complain about, I could tell she really enjoyed the food. <laughs> Your words, not mine. Don't ask her about it. She'll only give you another earful. Back when I was on the expedition with the Grand Master, I was often put in charge of cooking. Under the circumstances, I could only cook some pretty crude meals. But everyone still enjoyed them a lot. Maybe passion was the secret ingredient then too. There you are. Thank you for all of your hard work over the past few days. <laughs> Straight down to brass tacks, are we? Here, take it. I've thrown in a little extra as well. Call it a bonus. Hard work is rewarded here. Yay! It's like all the tiredness and stress have suddenly melted away. I'm just lucky you only worked on this job for a few days. At the rate you were progressing, a few more weeks and I think I might be made redundant. <laughs> Anytime. Bring some friends with you next time, and I'll show you all what Smiley Yunshao can do when working with both hands intact. Great! Although, just to be on the safe side, cook carefully in the meantime. You may have just jinxed it again. <laughs> <laughs>